Mai, 22 female, older brother, 26 male, was dating his fiance for a total span of about three years before proposing. Two years into dating, she cheated on my brother with another man. She told my brother about it. He was obviously broken because he thought that she was for him and they ended up breaking up. A year went by and my brother was a mess. He was depressed, lost a ton of weight, and my family and I barely saw him that year. He just wasn't the same. After a year passed, my brother progressively got back to his old self. My family and I were very proud and supportive of him. So last week he contacted our whole family and asked if we can plan a family dinner, as he had an announcement. We arranged the dinner this past Sunday. We all gathered at my parents' place. He walked in accompanied by his ex-girlfriend, the one who cheated on him. Safe to say we were all confused, but my mom allowed her to stay for dinner. He revealed to us that they had gotten back together a few months ago, and as of a few weeks ago, were engaged, and that she was also pregnant. The table was so silent you could hear a pin drop. She explained to myself and my family that she had made a mistake that she deeply regretted, and realized that my brother is the love of her life. I asked her if she thinks it's a little too late for that after she cheated on my big brother and humiliated him to all his friends and family like that. My brother told me to calm down, and his fiance told me that it's their business and it's time for us to get over it and move on. I am very aware that my brother is a grown adult who makes his own decisions and isn't influenced by anyone. I also am aware that his relationship is his business. But he told my family and I that his fiance cheated on him. So, obviously, we are going to have our own opinions about the situation and about her. He can't expect us not to. He told us that he would love it if we would support them and attend their wedding in a few months, as they want to do it before the baby comes. I told my brother congratulations, but I will not be attending the wedding, and that I think he should get a paternity test for the baby. His fiancé got extremely offended and started going off on me saying I'm s-shaming her and that she doesn't deserve this treatment. I told her that if the shoe fits. She stormed out of my apartment and my brother followed after her. He has now been messaging me saying that I need to apologize to his fiancé and accept her into the family by attending the wedding. She's been sending me nasty texts telling me off. My father and grandparents both agree with me that my brother should get a paternity test. My mom has always favored my brother and feels that we need to forgive his fiancé and move on. Am I the a-hole for not attending my brother's wedding and telling him to get a paternity test? Info my brother's fiancé is a couple months pregnant. They claim they got back together a few months ago. That's why I suggest the test to my brother. Not the a-hole. A paternity test is in order. And maybe also a brain check for your brother. <laughs> Amazing. Not the a-hole. But for real, your advice was quite sound. Maybe a little tasteless to say right in front of her. But if the baby is indeed your biological nephew, she should have no issues taking a test. In fact, she sounds like the kind of person that would gleefully gloat that she was right and you guys were all being jerks. The fact that she is sending you nasty texts for one somewhat tasteless comment makes me think that the baby might not be your brother's. You're right, the timing is suspicious. If she takes the paternity test and it is his, the right thing to do would be supportive and attend the wedding and try to forget the past as best you can. But I have a feeling this won't be the case. Not the a-hole. He called a family meeting about the situation. Did he really think there'd be no discussion at this meeting? Suggesting a paternity test isn't only a reasonable suggestion, but it's actually a very good suggestion, considering the sus timing. James and I were together for four years. I'm six months pregnant with his child. A couple weeks after finding out, James asked for a paternity test because around the time I got pregnant, he was away for two nights. And shortly before this, a friend of his had found out that his four-month-old was not his biological child, and he had to go through a complex divorce paternity test. I made it clear that I didn't like having any unnecessary procedure done on our child, but James insisted, so I agreed. When the results arrived and proved it was James's child, I asked him if he had anything to say to me. I was looking for an apology, but he just said he wouldn't talk to me when I was in a mood. I spent about a month trying to get him to talk about it with me, even suggesting couples therapy if that would make it easier but he refused to discuss it at all. Eventually, I ended the engagement and moved out. I've agreed to shared custody of the baby with James, though we've not talked about how it will be split yet. I don't talk to my parents, but I am close with James's family and get on well with most of them, particularly his sister, who introduced me and James. I ended the relationship around three weeks ago, but James only told his family earlier today. 
I got a call from his sister asking if I was all right, and I said yes. We talked for a while and during the conversation, she asked why we broke up. I said, he didn't tell you? And she said, James was vague. And after she pushed him, he just said, we couldn't make it work. I told her about the test. She was sympathetic and we talked a little longer, just catching up. We hung up. I went about my day. And then a couple hours after the call, I got a series of texts from James. Basically, live blogging as he took calls from his parents and all four siblings, including his sister I'd spoken to. From what I can gather from his texts, he was vague with everyone. So when I told his sister what happened, she filled in the missing info for the rest of the family. From what James has said, they're all furious with him. James says I had no right to tell them that. It's his family, and he's told them what he wanted them to know. And now I'm twisting what he said. He says I should have left well enough alone, or at least gone with what he told them because they're his family, so he's having to run damage control. My brother, who I'm staying with until my new place is ready, end of this month, said I should have just gone with what James said because I've probably embarrassed him and should apologize. I now feel bad because I genuinely never meant to get James into trouble, only to tell my friend what happened. But my brother has pointed out that as my friend is his sister, I should have known to just go with what James said. Am I the a-hole? Not the a-hole. You didn't twist what he said, and you just told the truth. This truth is shared between you and him because it used to be a relationship between you two. And especially now, it's about the baby. That's literally associated with both of you. In other cases, it may not have been your right to tell his family about this, but you have partial rights due to the association of the situation. In addition, the fact that he was vague reveals that maybe part of him realizes that admittedly, his reaction to the facts you were carrying his biological offspring is really weird. I get that he was afraid from his friends happening, but he was your fiance. Why is he so weirded out by the fact that you are pregnant with his child? Did he cheat or something? Kudos to you for recognizing the situation and deciding to leave. I'm sorry that this is happening and wish the best of luck to you and your baby. I hope your ex-fiance comes out clear why he reacted the way he did. Not the a-hole, because what happened between the two of you doesn't belong to him. You have associations and people to talk to, too. He sounds like a controlling jerk that thought of you as an accessory to his life instead of a whole other person with feelings and needs for people to talk to about what's happening. He doesn't like how his actions look to others, but that's not your fault. It's his actions and their opinion about it. Not the a-hole. You are under no obligation to shield him from the consequences of his actions, especially since it involved you. I, 32 female, have a younger sister, 28 female, Lana, who is still married to Adam, 29 male. My sister and Adam split nearly two years ago due to him cheating and other issues. Unfortunately, my sister cannot divorce him right now, as she doesn't know his current address and his family has also moved. In the UK, you have to provide an address to send divorce papers, and if not known, hire someone to look it up, which can be expensive, and it's not something she has funds for. She also has a restraining order against him. Now, me and my sister fell pregnant around the same time, except she didn't know about her pregnancy. After her split with Adam due to a large amount of stress, she had a miscarriage, which caused her anxiety to spiral, and she ended up gaining a bit of weight. I gave birth to my second son in February 2021. A few months after his birth, Adam started behaving really weird. Somehow, he believes that my baby boy is his, and Lana's child and my sister let me adopt him. My son has dark hair and darker eyes when my husband and I are both blonde with lighter eyes. My husband dyes his hair. His hair color is naturally dark, but Adam is not aware of it. Because of this, he believes the baby is his and Lana's as their own baby was meant to be born around the same time, and she gained and lost weight. I have told him he has nothing to do with my baby, and if he dares to come close, I will call the police. My husband fully supports me and is ready to jump in if things go south and have warned Adam that he will take the matters in his own hands if he sees Adam close to our baby. It's been a month since Adam stopped texting me his nonsense, and instead, he took it on social media, and keeps telling everyone how I stole his baby and refused to let him see his child. So, both my sister and I are getting messages from strangers, or some people we know, calling mainly me an a-hole for not allowing the father to see his child. And when I mention my son is my baby, and has nothing to do with Adam, people refuse to believe me, until I take a paternity test to prove them wrong. I am already stressed out and have received a letter before action from Adam's solicitor requesting access to my child this week. 
I cannot afford a court battle over such stupid things, as it will take a toll on my job, which is pretty stressful, and this might impact it negatively. More so, I do not want my children involved in this mess, since Adam has absolutely nothing to do with them and is not related to them in any way or form. Am I the a-hole? Let them take you to court. You wouldn't even really need a lawyer as everything is solved by a paternity test. But if he actually takes you to court, he is going to have to fill out an address, or at least show up to court. Then your sister can serve him divorce papers. Not the a-hole. However, as it has gone to this level, a quick swab of the cheek may be the easiest thing to put an end to this nonsense. He'll also have to provide his address if he's moving forward with this, and you can get your sister to serve divorce papers at the same time. Not the a-hole. Don't give in to any of that absolute psycho's demands. The man is convinced that the kid is his, and even if you allow him to supply a paternity test, take it in front of him and allow him to monitor all parties involved, you won't change his mind. This is a level of paranoia that requires medical intervention. Don't let that man anywhere near your child, or risk your child being abducted. I would also recommend that you record any and all correspondence with him, and get in contact with the police to advise them of what's going on, so you have a decent paper trail. Edit. One of the main reasons I do not want my son to have paternity tests done is because he is really sensitive to new people and things around him, and doesn't like being touched by people or things he doesn't know. We had a virus test done before, and it caused him a lot of stress and grief. Second, nothing has ever happened between me and Adam. We used to be close friends as we went to the same college and partied with the same people before he met Lana and I met my husband. But then we drifted apart. We never kissed or slept with each other. Edit 2. Okay, I will be ordering a paternity test kit to my home address just to prove that my baby has nothing to do with Adam and to protect him and send it to the solicitors. I do not feel comfortable sharing much info regarding my baby's birth or Lana's miscarriage as I do not want to give him tools to harass me further or something to use against Lana. This info will be reserved for court, if it happens, to review. The reason I was not comfortable doing it was because Adam had insisted the test be done at a specific clinic and nowhere else, which sounds shady. If Adam decides to carry on with the court, hopefully I will be able to find out his current address to pass on to my sister so she can divorce him as well. I, 20 male. Have an older brother, Tom, 27 male. When I was seven, I walked in on our dad kissing a woman who wasn't my mom. I was shocked, confused, and felt sick in that very same moment and started to cry. The woman ran away while my dad tried to get me to calm down and convince me that I didn't see what I saw. I was naive, but not dumb, and while I couldn't fully understand what was happening, I knew that my mom, 51 female, would be upset. My mom was out of town when this happened and my dad spent the rest of her trip to try and convince to not say a word. The only reason why I started to go through with it was because Tom came to me and said that it was better to keep quiet to spare our mom's feelings. I didn't say a word when my mom came back, but I had a hard time being around her as well as trying to eat. My mom was worried that I was sick, but my dad brushed her off. I held in the secret for about three days and then had a breakdown at school when my teacher was going over the importance of honesty. My mom came to the school and I ended up telling her everything in tears. My mom held me and told me that it was okay and that nothing was my fault. My mom confronted my dad and during the divorce, it came out that Tom knew for at least a year but never said anything. Our parents ended up needing to sell the house and Tom started to lash out at me and that's when I think something in my mom finally snapped. She didn't fight over custody for Tom the way she did for me and ended up with 50-50 with him while primary for me. Over the years, my mom would still talk to Tom and try to put in the effort to have a relationship with him, but it wasn't the same as with me. When asked, she would say that teen boys don't need their moms as much as younger ones do, so I would get most of her attention and care. One day I straight up asked my mom why she interacted with Tom differently than me, now that I was older too, and she confessed that she was hurt at how Tom was willing to not only say nothing about my dad's affair, but also covered for him once before too. My mom admitted that while she still loved Tom, she just didn't have it in her heart to fully trust him again and preferred to keep her distance in case he ever disappointed her again. I can admit that it was sad to hear, but I could also understand it. Recently, Tom has been going on rants about how my mom played favorites, and I told him that it was his own fault for being more loyal to our cheating dad than to our mom who was wronged. Tom has went very low contact with me since, and my dad called me an a-hole, but his opinion on this means nothing to me, so... Am I the a-hole? 
not the a-hole. Your dad is the a-hole. Tom isn't. He was young and under the same pressure as you. A great responsibility was placed on him at the age of 13. In his mind, he was keeping the family together. Your dad is a jerk for putting that pressure on him and later on you. Your mom was hurt, understandably so, but you all need counseling in that situation. You're not the a-hole, but your dad and your mom both are. Your dad is the a-hole for putting that burden on a child. He used his position of power to manipulate a child into keeping a secret, and your mom is the a-hole for punishing a child for doing what a parent asked him to do, and not realizing that he was let down too. Your mom is pissed at the wrong person. This isn't Tom's fault at all. He was a child. He didn't know any different, and she essentially said, F you, and gave up on him. Can you honestly not see how wrong that was? It's not your brother's fault he isn't close to your mom. It's your mom's fault for punishing a child for something his dad did. Not the a-hole. From your brother's perspective, he was a kid who did an awful thing, and his mom revoked her love over it, reinforcing why he was right to do what he did. I'd be curious what is going through his head under the anger. He was a kid, and trusted a figure that told him it was for the best. It was wrong of him to do it, but we shouldn't be punished for mistakes we made as children. 